Nope, we don't need to speed up the process. We don't need to nuke this. You know why? Because this is the non-microwave truth. I am C.L. Whiteside, and this is brought to you by Time of Grace Ministry. Thank you to the people that have written reviews. Hit the five star, left a comment on YouTube. I appreciate you. Now, it's not cheating if you happen to listen to this podcast on a different platform and you want to hit the like, hit the five star, write a review or subscribe. That's not cheating. Go ahead and do it. And if you haven't done any of those things so far, go ahead and do that. And the reason would be is that some people base what they listen to off of how many subscriptions, how many likes, how many, what's the, what's the rating that the podcast has. So that will allow the gospel the Lord Jesus word to reach more people. So go ahead and, and do that if you haven't done it already. Now we got a true first world problem today. This is a straight up first world problem because we're going to talk a lot today about fame. Like who's the most famous? What's, what's fame? And that's a true first world problem. Our first world problem question today is this. If you could have dinner with any celebrity, any famous person spend some time with them for a couple of hours who would it be now i found this question a little difficult because i'm not fangirling over anybody it's nobody that if i saw them i would be st starstruck or be like oh my gosh that's 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 them like nah that, that's not me but that just made me think about how like the other day my wife saw bobby portis and some of you might be like who in the world is bobby portis well, he's the sixth man for the Milwaukee Bucks. And she was like, there goes Bobby Portis. But like, he didn't have any people following him. And I'm like, babe, he's not that fa famous. Like, he's Milwaukee famous. And don't get me wrong, in Milwaukee, we love Bobby Portis. I love to watch Bobby Portis play. But if he goes certain places, people wouldn't know who he was. He's a sixth man in, in the NBA. The other day, we saw Drew Holiday. And she was like, there goes Drew Holiday. And But she was just surprised people weren't running over and taking pictures. And like, where's his, where are his bodyguards at? Where's his security? And I'm like... He's famous, but it's, it's levels to this. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's levels to this. I even remember my brother, we saw uh, Plies. I don't know, some of y'all like, who is Plies? This is when we were teenagers. We saw Plies at the, the mall, and he's like, there goes Plies. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, I do, I'm definitely not asking him for, him for his autograph. He's the average rapper to me. So I'm not fangirling over anybody, but I want you to think about that. If there was a celebrity or a famous person that you could have dinner with, who would it be? No, I do have a couple of people that I did think about. I thought about Barry Sanders. Back in the day, little Barry. I liked me some Barry Sanders. I try to model myself after him. But like I said, I'm not running up to him or being starstruck. Like, oh my gosh, there goes Barry Sanders. He's my idol. I don't have no idols. No. But the person that I did think that I would like to have dinner with, and it's not because of, you know, there's some mentor or some idol. It's because I think they're hilarious. And that's Charles Barkley. I do enjoy watching TNT, the post-game stuff, the pre-game stuff. He has me rolling and it would just be great to have a conversation with him, pick his brain a little bit. Or I thought I tried to think about some coach, but I couldn't think of a coach. But you, who would you want to have dinner with? Who would you want to spend a couple hours with? Remember, I would love to hear from you on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. My handle is Champion Life 23. And this is our first world problem. It is dinner time. The title of our episode today is The Most Famous Person Ever. And when we think about this episode, just think about that, that word fame and famous. And when I'm talking about famous, I'm talking about the most recognizable name or most recognizable face that you can, you can think of. And just thinking about that, who do you think is the most famous person in the world right now? At this very moment, who do you think is the most famous person in the world right now? If you're on YouTube, leave it in the comments right now. Who do you think is the most famous person? Now, if you're riding around in a car or you're doing something else, get that person in your mind. Okay? You got that person? Now, I would actually say it's LeBron James. I actually think it's LeBron James. I think if you went to the average person... Anywhere in the world and showed them a picture of LeBron James, they probably not like that's that basketball player. That's that 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 dude, LeBron James. I could be wrong, though. But what do you think? Now, I Googled this and they had some interesting people pop up. One that I actually agree with is they had The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, pop up as one of the most famous people in the world. Do you agree with that? I also thought, like, what about Donald Trump or President Obama, Barack Obama, former presidents? Would they be the most famous person? I was like, maybe not in the entire world. 
something that kept popping up would be like Elon Musk or, or Bill Gates. But I'm like, man, I don't really think kids that Generation Z would really know who they are like that. They might, but they might not. Some other ones that popped up would be Ronaldo or Messi, two icons in the game of soccer. <laughs> but I got breaking news for you. Americans, most of us don't know our soccer like we should. But in other places in the world, I think those two would be up there for sure. Now, some other ones that I saw that kept popping up, Kylie Jenner, Kim Kardashian, Beyonce. I don't know. Who is the most famous person in the world? I, I really don't know. But I just want you to think about with these people. Why are these people famous? Like, why do we consider them famous? One of the big reasons we consider them famous is because they have money. They have lots of money. They also are, you know, entertainers in some form or fashion for the most part, or they're considered great or unique at what they do. So since they're great or unique at what they do, that has brought them fame. Fame. Um, people seem to be captivate, captivated by them, drawn to them. They have a huge following of people wanting to know and interested in their life and what's taking place in their life. Keeping up with the Kardashians is a perfect example of that. So it's like, why are these people famous? Now, when you think about this, who is the most famous person ever, though? Who is the most famous person ever? You know who it is? Jesus. Some might call him Yeshua. Yeshua is the Hebrew name of Jesus. I saw something that says Jesus is like the Greek name. That's how you would pronounce it. I think translated from from Hebrew. But but bottom line, what name you want to use with him? I'm talking about the dude who was the son of Mary and Joseph, the dude from Nazareth, the dude who turned water into wine, the dude who healed the blind and the sick, the dude who had control over nature, the dude who had that death with the Roman crucifixion and he died, but he rose from the dead. That's the dude I'm talking about. I'm talking about Jesus. Now, when you look at Jesus, Jesus had four different biographies in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are four. We know those as the gospel, four things telling about the life of Jesus and, and how he is our savior. Now I could even show you a bad picture of Jesus. And why I say a bad picture is because like, we really should have never tried to make a picture. And there's so much controversy over that picture. But if you pretty much saw a dude, a lot of times it'd be a white dude with long hair and a beard. They'd be like, that's Jesus. I think the dude who did that was a uh, Warner Salmon. He, he came up with that picture. People would be able to recognize that as Jesus. I don't know if they should or shouldn't, but, but they usually could. Now we got to look at why is Jesus the most famous person ever? Why is he the most famous person ever? Now, Jesus did entertain and he did captivate like those people that I, I mentioned in today's world. He captivated and he entertained from a standpoint with, with his miracles, um, raising someone from the dead, feeding the 5,000, walking on water, calming storms. He, he did some miracles that just amazed the people. And they're like, man, this is a special brother. Like this brother is, whew, this brother is something different. But he also captivated and had people drawn to him because of his love, because of his compassion, because he spoke the truth no matter what. And the main reason he's so famous is because he's the only person, the one and only person that we can find, find salvation through, find fulfillment through, find true purpose in our world through. And he says this, Jesus even said this in John Chapter 14, verse six, Jesus said this. He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. No one comes to the father except through me. So no one has salvation except through me, not through Buddha, not through Hinduism and Gandhi, not through Islam and Muhammad, not through Moses, not through money, not through being really, really good or being really, really good looking, not through speaking your truth, only through Jesus Christ. That's the only way. And Jesus made that very clear. Now, when you look at some people that are, are famous in our world today, um, The Rock, Elon, Elon Musk, they will be forgotten. You look at Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, told just great works of art. Some of us don't care about that stuff. That does nothing for us. If you took those out of history, we would be all right. If you look at Napoleon, the big in the French Revolution, I don't really know. I, I really don't care. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I really don't care. Even Michael Jackson, I saw he was like top 10 in a lot of things. Most people have moved on, especially Generation Z. They like Michael, J Michael who? 
We don't really care. We own to somebody else today. So there were some who did try to get us to move on from Jesus and take away from the fact that he's the most famous person ever. And some people would try to throw someone like a Gandhi up there as being just as famous and influential as Jesus. But when you really look at Gandhi, who, who probably is one of the more famous people in the world's history, he ain't Jesus. And something you see with Gandhi is Gandhi even talked about Jesus and took things from Jesus. So you, some of you might be like, who, who is Gandhi? So Gandhi, he led his country from British rule. Like he, he led them from that dictatorship. He was big on nonviolent protests. Martin Luther King Jr., they said he took a lot of the philosophies from Gandhi. But you know who Gandhi took a lot of his philosophies from? Jesus, Yeshua. Yeah, that's who he took them from. Now, the thing about Gandhi is he tried to say that like all religions were, were good and morally acceptable because they just make you a better person. As long as they make you a better person, it's OK. All religions play a purpose in, in someone's life. All play this like um, goal that you have for achieving some type of divine nature. Now, if you I got to research in a little bit about Gandhi, Gandhi was moved by the Mount, the Sermon on the Mountain. And Gandhi couldn't deny Jesus like he absolutely could not deny Jesus. And we got to look at just the fact like Jesus is so influential. Like why? He's so important. He's he's so important. He's so influential. He's so famous because he's the only way to salvation, the one and only way. And this passage in, in Matthew reminds us of this. Matthew 7 verse 13, it says, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many will enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few will find it. Only a few will find it. When you look at that narrow gate, sometimes people think like it's really hard to become a Christian, but it's not. It's absolutely not. Christianity actually is the most inclusive message because it is for all. However, though, however, it's narrow because there is only one way, only one way to salvation, to eternal life. And that's through Jesus. Like, that's it. That is it. Then we get at that part that says, wide is the gate and broad is the road. Why do so many go this way? Like, why do so many choose that that broad road? And that's we got to remember that it's so many options to be wrong. But to be right is often limited in the options. And in this case, there's only one option, and, and that's Jesus. Now, some would say this isn't fair or this doesn't make sense to have all these options to be wrong and only one way to be right. Like, why can't we believe in Islam? Why can't we believe in Hinduism? Why can't we believe in evolution? Why can't we just believe in whatever we want to do? Because this narrow is the gate. It's only one gate. And that's because you're on the wrong road like that. You go on that road. You on the wrong road. Like when I really think about this, Buddha didn't die for your sins. Zeus didn't suffer hell for you. You didn't live a perfect life for yourself. No other person can make you acceptable to God except one. And that's Jesus Christ. The enemy wants you to think that it's like multiple ways. Why does he do that, though? <laughs> because he wants to destroy you. He absolutely wants to destroy you. So he tells you that there's all these different paths or to go on this this broad, wide path because he wants to destroy you. Jesus loves you, though. So he gives you the non-microwave truth that there's only one way. And that's through him. Something else that it mentioned in this passage, it says for small or narrow gate for the small or narrow gate. Why is the road narrow? Why is their road narrow? And the road is narrow because. Living God's way, living through God's truths, that's not popular a lot of times. A lot of times you experience hate, you experience persecution, and oftentimes it's not easy, but it's the only way. It's the true way. It's absolutely right. It mentions in this passage, only a few will find it. Only a few will find this gate. And why is that? And it's not because it's not presented to them. It's because they reject the truth. It's because they want to find a religion that that fits with their sinful flesh or their sinful nature is telling them to do. They want to go with what's popular. They want to go with the flow versus standing for Christ and, and his truths. 
And they don't want to have any stones thrown at them. I'm talking from a figurative standpoint, but they don't want to have any type of persecution. So they go on that the broad road instead of going on the narrow road. And that's the only reason that only a few find it. And you should just read Matthew chapter seven, man. There's so many gems and there's so many warnings against this type of philosophy and, and false prophets and false teachers. Now, somebody else that we look at on this, this episode of the most famous person ever, we have to look at Muhammad. Because Muhammad is up there and a lot of things I see he's like ranked like top 10, maybe top 20. And some of you might be like, well, well who is Muhammad? So according to Islam, I'm going to give you a couple stats or a couple facts. He was supposed to be the final prophet of God. He was supposed to be the first resurrected, the first into to, first to intercede, first to enter paradise. When you look at Muhammad and the Quran, though, they knew they knew doggone well they could not deny Jesus. They couldn't deny Jesus. So they more so try to discredit him or they add things to him or take away things from him. like they would say that Jesus is not the son of God. But he's definitely mentioned in the Quran. But like they'll say something like he wasn't crucified. But the weird thing that I noticed about the Quran is that it will say to read the Bible and that the Gospels are some truth that you should look at and follow. Like you can't do both of those because when you read God's word, when you read the Bible, it, it's like I just said earlier, it says Jesus is the only way, the only way. But the Quran will say, yeah, you, you can mix it all up. And I think they knew. And I think they realized the enemy realized that if anyone researches and they tried to say Jesus didn't exist at all or Jesus is not real, anyone who researches this will be like, that's a complete lie. That is a complete lie. Like it would be impossible not to find someone named Jesus who fit the description more so of the Bible, though. But what they're banking on is a lot of people do not do their research like most people don't, you know, and they just go along with, with the lie. That's what the enemy is banking on, on doing in this case. And there was an episode, I think it was episode 87 which was titled put the Bible to the test that you should go back and listen to, which just compares the, the Bible and just how much evidence is presented. And I just wanted to compare one of the most famous people ever, Muhammad, to the actual famous, most famous person ever, Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus. OK, so when you compare these two, Muhammad, Muhammad maybe has like one biography kind of that's in the Quran. When you look at Jesus, he has four bi biographies. You know, not to mention all the prophecies that he fulfilled in the Old Testament. Some people, some things will say like there are 200 prophecies. Some things will say there are 400 prophecies. That he Bottom line, maybe it says like in that, that 300 range of prophecies that he fulfilled. So some stuff that happened in the past that Jesus had to do and it had to go right. Do you know how rare like lightning strike? You got a better chance of getting hit by lightning 10 times. So, you know, this is God's word. You know, this is the truth, though. But you just get into the word and you'll see this. When you compare Muhammad to Jesus, you'll look at like. Muhammad really didn't perform any miracles. Jesus performed tons of miracles, tons and tons and tons and tons of miracles. Um, the Quran would try to say that. I think they almost try to say that Muhammad is a, a perfect man, but he made mistakes. Jesus didn't make any mistakes. Jesus was truly perfect, truly perfect. And they say they deem a mistake by saying they didn't. A person didn't intentionally do it. That doesn't matter in Christianity. It doesn't matter if you intentionally did it or you did do it. You did or you didn't intentionally mean to do it. You did it. So that's why all of us need a savior. But Jesus, completely perfect. Now, when you look at Muhammad's life, he he had slaves. He married, I think, a six year old and maybe um, end up hitting or smashing or consecrating is the, the, the word they use when she was nine or ten. Um, yeah, go, go look at that. Just, just go research that there, there's so much evidence for Jesus and there's not a lot of evidence for, for Muhammad. So for the Bible, for, for Jesus, there are 30 Christian sources that will tell you about Jesus. There are also nine non-Christian sources that will tell you about Jesus. That will tell you that he died. That will tell you that he had a follower, that he had followers he had his disciples that will tell you that his disciples believe that he rose from the dead. They will also tell you that his disciples died for him. And remember, his disciples would know if this brother was lying or he was not. So that's just some important information. The Quran says to read the Bible. Remember that the Quran says to read the Bible. I'm going to tell you this. The Bible does not say to read the Quran. It does not. In fact, it warns us against this. The Bible even warns us against people who would take Jesus because so many people have done this in history. The most fam to the most famous man ever. And they have manipulated it and they've twisted it and they've taken the, the true meaning out of it. And the Bible tells us this in 1 John 4, verse 1 through 4. It says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many 
false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. So if they're not telling you Jesus is the Savior, that's the Antichrist. If they're just trying to say, well, Jesus didn't exist or Jesus was just some really good dude with a really good philosophy. That's the Antichrist. That's that's the test of the spirit that you got to figure out right then, right then and there. And I just want you to think about this, man. If there was no Jesus, if, if we didn't have Jesus's influence and the, the most famous person ever, whoever you think is famous, whoever you think is influential, they wouldn't matter. Because if we took that person that you think is famous or influential, that's not Jesus. History might change a little bit or somebody else will rise to the occasion and be able to fulfill that role or do what they did. But if you take Jesus out of the equation, this world would be completely different. Way, way different. So many things wouldn't matter. None of these people would matter. I wouldn't matter if Jesus didn't do what he did. So that's just something for you to think about, man. Something for you to think about because we can't do that. And, and just to wrap this up, I just want you to think about why Jesus is the most famous, most important, most influential person ever. And he, he tells us what he can give us. In John 14, verse 27, he says this, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now, what is the main reason that Jesus is so important? He's so influential. And why is he the most famous person ever? This comes from Acts chapter four, verse 12. It's because he gives us salvation. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name, no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved and this is the non-microwave truth the most important person ever is jesus trust that know that and if you don't believe that you, you got to get into the word get into the word and just see do a little research i'm telling you i'm telling you you're gonna be you're gonna be you're gonna be shocked if you don't know the lord you're gonna be shocked because the holy spirit is gonna do his thing he's gonna do his thing thanks for joining me in this episode of the most famous person ever peace punch captain crunch say no to drugs and yes to jesus i am out